out of line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Liberty's kids. Fighting for liberty is one thing. Dying for nothing's another. Stand your ground. Stand your ground, you. You can't win a war by retreating. Or can you? He is in danger of becoming a parody of a general. Second December, 1776. Uh, uh, Dearest Mother, the war goes badly for the Americans. General Washington has been driven out of New York entirely. His men carry on bravely, but the lack of supplies and victories is taking its toll. Some feel that General Washington's plan of constantly retreating will wear out his own forces, while the British troops remain strong. The winter has forced all sides to make camp. We wait, watching each other. Even tonight, the camp is alive with news of a captured spy. His name is John Honeyman. He's a butcher from Griggstown, New Jersey, and a former British soldier. He has been supplying cattle and intelligence of Washington's movements to the Hessian army camped in Trenton. It seems that Mr. Honeyman journeyed too far away from the Hessian camp in search of more cattle. He was captured by American soldiers on patrol. What do you think they'll do to him? What do you think? He's a Tory spy. He betrayed his neighbors. I don't understand why they call him a traitor. He's just being loyal to his king. That's something James will never understand. Right now, James is interviewing the soldiers to see what they think of Mr. Honeyman. I don't care about it one way or the other. But what if General Washington gets helpful information from questioning the spy? I'll give the General some helpful information. My enlistment's up in 10 days, and I'm counting the minutes. You mean you won't re-enlist? Don't you want liberty? I signed on to fight for liberty. Now I'm sorry I ever heard the word. It's cold, and I ain't got nothing for my feet. I went four days without food, till I caught me a possum. Ever eat possum? I never will again. Never will enlist again, either. I'm running home to my family in 10 days. You know what? The rest of the militia's going with me. Won't be nobody left. Look, Henri, General Washington and the Tory spy. I hope that spy Honeyman hasn't ruined Washington's plans, whatever they are. This man is a notorious turncoat. I want to interrogate him personally in my tent. Did you hear that? He's going to personally interrogate Henri? Henri! Psst! Henri! Get away from there. That's official army business. We can't be listening in on that. But I want to know if the spy has ruined anything. What do you have for me? I bring news that is better than your wildest imaginings. General Howe is suspending military operations for the winter. He's moving the British troops to Staten Island and Manhattan. Howe has left Trenton in the hands of Colonel Rahl and his Hessians. Rahl has relaxed his guard and is ripe for attack. The Hessian colonel is a brave warrior, 
but he's fond of comfort, and they are about to begin their Christmas celebration. I have prepared a diagram of the Hessian camp. I have also assured Colonel Rahl that you and your men are in no condition to attack. Tonight, after I made my miraculous escape, I shall reassure him again. Words cannot express my gratitude. By posing as a traitor, you have put yourself and your family in a most unpleasant position. I am glad if I've been a service. That you have. Take charge of the prisoner. This man is unrepentant. Lock him in the guardhouse. Honeyman has been spying on the British for General Washington. Where have you been? Looking for you. We've been worried about you. Did you find anything out? He was trying to eavesdrop on official army business. Henri? But what about the spy? That is none of our business. <laughs> Remember me? You were asking me those questions last night? I'm soon to be ex-private Edward Hughes of Virginia, by the way. I'm James. Henri. My name's Sarah. I don't suppose y'all could spare a little extra. Sure. Oui. Of course. Much obliged. Y'all hear about the spy? He got away. What? Nobody knows how. The guardhouse was still locked. He just wasn't in it. This is a disaster. He's probably blabbing everything to the British right now. You're right. That puts us right in the middle of a camp that could be stormed by British troops at any moment. James? You don't seem very concerned. What? I'm the loyalist. You're the patriot. Shouldn't you be at least as worried as I am? I am. I'm just hungrier. Dr. Franklin? Monsieur Panay? No, monsieur, his partner, Gerard. All France has been awaiting the arrival of the great American genius. And all you behold is a grouchy old man with gout. Not at all. You are welcome in my home to eat, drink, and rest. I shall take you up on all three. So you come to France to ask the king for help against the British, no? No, I come to end my days reading, experimenting, and working with the great scientists of France. Oh, yes, of course. Then your coming has nothing to do with Washington's crushing defeats at Long Island and New York. Ours must seem a lost cause. If only some good news of Washington's army could reach France. Just after sundown, we are going to cross the Delaware and attack the Hessian camp in Trenton. My plan is derived from the hit-and-run tactics that the Indians on the frontier used quite effectively in the last war, but with a touch of my own strategy. Basically, it's a three-pronged sneak attack. Three regiments crossing the Delaware at three different points, above Trenton, opposite Trenton, and downstream from Trenton at Bordentown surrounding the Hessians and cutting off escape options. General, won't this plan be terribly difficult to coordinate? Yes. Its success will depend upon our ability to meet that challenge and time the landings so that the Hessians will be surprised before they are out of their beds. Tonight, after evening parade, instead of returning to your tents, you are to prepare to march to McConkie's Ferry. There, we will cross the Delaware and mount an attack on the British stronghold in Trenton. That is all. Just when I thought I was going home, 
And a Merry Christmas to you. Only seven days to go, and we have to go get ourselves killed. After that, Spy has gone back and told them everything. They'll be waiting for this. Has General Washington lost his mind? He knows what he's doing. So you still think he's got some secret plan? Of course he does. I ain't seen none of it so far. All we've done is retreat and retreat again. This is the most useless mess I ever got involved in. Out of desert. But you're a soldier. You can't just leave. Fighting for liberty is one thing. Dying for nothing's another. James, he has a right to know what he's risking his life for. He'll be all right if he just follows Washington's orders. We spent that Christmas night crossing the half-frozen Delaware River, hoping the Hessians wouldn't catch on to General Washington's plan. This is a chance to see history in the making. Oh, and maybe freeze to death. <gasps> Help! Man overboard! Help! Grab it and hold on! can't afford to do that. Heck, everybody's cold. Why'd you take a chance like that? You could have fallen in, too. Every man is important, Private Hughes. I'm just thinking about the cause. I gotta admit, I ain't been thinking about the cause for quite some time. explicit instructions that he is not to be disturbed for any reason. Could you give him a message right away? If you'd like to write a note, I would be glad to deliver it to you. Colonel Roll, Washington's troops have crossed the Delaware. They are mounting an attack. You must rally your forces immediately. you not to interrupt us. No more interruptions, please. Yes, sir. 
Gentlemen, shall we continue? General Washington, the sleet has ruined most of the gunpowder. Then use the bayonet, Captain. Trenton must be taken. Has the great George Washington gone mad? Everything has gone wrong and he still wants to continue. Y'all better take cover in that there barn. We'll be in the shooting war soon. Please be careful and don't take any unnecessary chances. <laughs> Too late! <laughs> Washington's troops have attacked. I've been hit. I cannot stand. I cannot move. Let me see the wound. Oh, the note. Colonel Rawl, Washington's troops have crossed the Delaware. They are mounting an attack. You must rally your forces immediately. If I had only read this note, I would not be lying here now. Look! The flag! Our flag. Our flag! Our flag! Well, it's not exactly my flag. We won! We won! We lost nary a man! The town is ours! We caught them with their breeches down! Congratulations! Finally! A victory! I'll tell you what else. When we was marching in, I saw General Washington on his horse. The horse slipped on the ice and would have fell. But the general grabbed his mane with his big right hand and pulled him straight. Kept on going without a hitch. That's when I first started to think we might have a chance. James, but what happened to the spy? Honeyman was secretly spying for Washington. What? I overheard them talking when I went to get Henri away from the tent. He told Washington that the British had pulled out of Trenton and the Hessian soldiers would not be ready for an attack. You knew this all the time and didn't tell us? It was a military secret that I wasn't supposed to know. So he really did have a secret plan. I wonder what he's going to do in five days when he loses his troops. My brave fellows, you have done all I have asked you to do, and more than could be reasonably expected. But your country is at stake. Your families your houses, and all that you hold dear. I know your enlistment ends tomorrow. The present moment is one which will decide our destiny. I'm asking for volunteers to stay on and continue the fight. Philadelphia merchant Robert Morris has donated the money for me to offer each man $10 for another tour of duty. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> Somebody. Heck, I will if somebody else will too. I can't fight this thing alone. Now we have an army. Without your courage, Private, we wouldn't have a chance. Ah, oh, heck, let's win this thing. General Washington? I want to congratulate you on your brilliant success. Yeah, even though she doesn't believe in your cause. 
General Washington? Yes? A message from Congress. They fled to Baltimore due to the British advance on Philadelphia. So now I'll have to go to Baltimore to plead for more money and troops. No, sir, you won't. That's the whole point of the message. Evidently, Congress has seen fit to give me full power to do all things relative to the operations of war. That's fantastic! First a great victory, and now this! Most generals, when they get that much power, become dictators. A free nation must not be ruled by generals. The sword is the last resort for the preservation of liberties, and so it must be put aside when those liberties are established. Dearest Mother, I now know that I have been in the presence of a true military genius. When the British General Cornwallis learned of the surprise attack on Trenton, he immediately marched his troops there. The Hessian forces and all of their weapons were gone, captured by the Americans. But Washington's troops were nowhere to be found. Where were they? They were mounting a surprise attack on Princeton, New Jersey. Since most of the British troops were in Trenton, Washington's men took Princeton handily. It's a fine fox hunt now, my boys. Washington's skill and inventiveness at using the tactics he learned from Indians is beyond compare. I am, of course, still loyal to my king, but I fear that England faces a greater challenge than she knows. The American cry for independence is being backed up by a very canny general. And the tide, perhaps, is turning. Line.